things to do, some social. <laughs> I've only had that much. Let's try again. I'm going to ask Alex to do some short sections on the vlogs over the next few weeks. More of a technical side for Matchman. And I think we'll start off with pole floats. Now, pole floats come in all shapes and sizes. So I thought it'd be a really good time for Alex to explain what he would use and why. So, Alex, can you give us a lowdown on the floats that yeah. you would use? Yeah. Yeah. So, obviously, there's thousands and thousands of different shapes of floats and styles and patterns and and such forth. Um, we're going to cover natural venues today. So, we'll start off with a typical river eight to ten foot deep so a bit of pace so we'll start off with body shape so we do tend to use a rounder body shape andy for rivers because you can hold back uh, you can run it through it's just more stable uh, bristle wise fiber plastic or hollow um, hollow tends to be the more popular because it's a bit more universal you can fish bigger baits on it as well as smaller baits and you can sort of dot it down uh, and you can still see your bite. So hollow bristle was normally a favourite. Um, I would use a fibre when you're fishing more delicate baits, so blood worm, pinkies, single maggot, that sort of thing. Um, so the body shapes we tend to go for, I'll show you the two there, if you can see those. So you've got a more proper rugby ball shape and then a more rounded rugby ball. So this one on here, this one, the black one, the carper, uh, I think, is it a Gabby? Yeah, Carpa Gabby. That's more for when there's a bit more pace and you are holding back. Now, both these are wire stem. I tend to use wire when there's a bit more of a chop or a bit more wind. Obviously, wire is more stable. It gets underneath that and you can present your bait a bit better. Um, I tend to go for more carbon stem floats, um, to be honest, on rivers, just for the simple fact that they, um, they follow the bulk down and they sit in the water better. Obviously, when it's windy, you tend to go for the wire one. Um, that is a Carper Gloucester, and that's a hollow bristle again. So you can use a hoster base for that. If, for example, I was fishing a slower drain or a slower river with less water on, I tend to go for a Cole McJolly, which I think we've covered quite a lot in the podcast. Um, it's a plastic bristle, carbon stem, more teardrop sort of shape than around a rugby ball you can run it through you can check it you can do a bit of everything so that that one there so you have to pick a jolly and then probably a gloucester would probably cover you either in wire or carbon for your rivers so you would have probably the same style floats but both in both in uh, the wire and both in the carbon depending on the state of the flow yeah flow uh, obviously from a gram up to four gram anything heavier than that then i tend to use perhaps a, a flat float if you're trying to hold a bait still if you was fishing worms and you're trying to nail a bait to the bottom um i tend to go for um a round rugby ball solid plastic bristle line through the body so it's nice and strong carbon stem as well so you can nail a big blob worm or a dendra or bunches of maggots like that as a single float there you might be able to see that a little bit better there look. so when you say line through the body do you physically mean yep. it goes through yeah, the line goes obviously through the body and out the other end. Um, I tend to use four rubbers on my river floats. Some people use three, but with four, I tend to use... it. Just If one comes off, you've still got three. Um, the other key is to have your last rubber just below the body, not too tight. Because when you're fishing river floats, and if you're on a tidal river, for example, which I do quite a lot of in the summer on the Bure and the Thern, you're constantly moving your float up and down. So having the right float rubbers is really critical and in the right position as well because if it's too tight, the line cuts into the body of the float and damages your float, then it takes on water and then you get all sorts of problems then. I mean, some people use hard as nails, so your missus is nail varnish. They tend to use that on the floats, but I'm not a fan of that anymore. I just tend to use my original ones, get the right silicon, and it works a treat, to be honest. Um, so they're more like your river floats. The other float which I haven't really covered is your uh, flat float or lollipop floats as you'd call them. So there. How fast would it need to be flowing for you to use that? Well, it's a good question. Um, when flat floats originally came out, they were designed to nail your bait dead still. Um, these particular ones are 
they're a bit unique. I'll talk about the normal ones first. So let me just grab something off the shelf here. Hang on. So that's your traditional Caluso torpedo shape. You can see here, there's no eye. The float's just held on by rubbers. So the, des the design of that is, say the flow is flowing here, you can hold back and the bristle's still straight. So that's, that's the body shape for holding it dead still. The only problem is sometimes getting the right float for just itching it through, you know, if you're fishing for ropes or just trying to put your bait through a little bit slower, they weren't quite right. So now they've got an eye on these particular ones. So if you wanted to run it through at normal, it runs like a normal float, but then when you hold back, it acts like a flat float and you can put it through your peg a lot slower. So I actually sell the half up to half gram. So places like March, for example, this year when we've had a lot of flow, you can get away with a half gram in shallow water. And you know, normal people will be fishing a two gram float and you might be using a three quarter of a gram flat float running it through and your presentation is so much better so yeah, yeah. there's advantages for a bit of everything really so you don't need to be running that hard to actually use one no no with those you could fish it on a lake if you wanted to you know they use them on the stainy they're getting a bit more universal now flat flows and the other good thing is they're pretty much indestructible i mean that's eva and i'm squeezing it as hard as you can you can't break it so oh, they last okay. forever yeah expensive but they do last forever same with those, you can tread on that, stamp on that, you will not break them. Um, so I think we'll probably talk a bit more in depth about flat floats on a later stage, but they're the two sort of body shapes for flat float fishing. Um, the other float, which if you was fishing on a river, fishing to hand, um, and you're catching a lot of fish, tend to use like a pencil cigar shaped float. Um, I'll show you there. They're good because when you strike, they come through the water a lot cleaner and everything's a little bit faster. Um, they're good for when you just want to run your rig at pace and not check it. So you just drop it in right over a nice little area. If you're catching over a short area, you drop it in, run it, short line and catch fast. Um, or fish it on a long line and run it a bit like a stick float almost. Yeah, on the pot. that makes perfect sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they're more like your deeper natural venues. Um, if I was fishing through the water, so the last two foot fishing casters or hemp on a river, I tend to use um, hollow. These are hollow bristles. You see them. They're um, they're like a, a cigar shape. Well, I don't know what they are. They're elongated pear shape, aren't they? Um, they're just nice for hemp when you're dinking loose feeding hemp or casters and fishing for roach or hybrids and fishing on the drop basically. So you can hold it hold it and then as the last droppers settle you can let it go and it carries on going um so a bit of a universal you could even use them for a little bit of chop worm fishing as well um then we'll move on to more like your natural drains to here um so slightly shallower water now shallower water yeah uh say for example there's a bit of wind on um tend to go for the lower carpus shorts now, they're a fibre bristle. Because we're fishing pinkies and squats and things like that, uh, bread, that it registers on the float better. And it just they're just dead right for around here, to be honest. They're not too long, as you can see. Um, so you ain't got loads of uh, float in the water. When you strike, it's nice and clean. So a bit of a universal float if you're fishing bread short or ground bait and pinky fishing in slightly deeper water on the drains. And what are they called again? They're called a carper short. Right, yeah. So... Um, then again, that similar body shape to the carp ashore. Um, but these are just different bristles, but similar body shape. So the top one is a Drennan SF2. I tend to use them in it's probably up to sort of four foot of water, up to sort of 0.6 of a gram. They're good for pinkies, bread, most of the baits we use on the drains. They're plastic, so I tend to use that when the conditions are a bit more favourable. If there's a bit more chop on... Um, I tend to use uh, an MP1, which is a Mark Pollard MP1 float. Been around for a long time. It's a longer bristle, longer body, and it just gets under that surface skim and just tends to fish a little bit better. So again, your normal pinky squats, that sort of thing. Then if I was fishing sort of across in the real shallower water or canal fishing, I tend to go for the same body shape, but they're shorter. Um, 
The top one is a Colmix Senna. They're plastic bristles, so again, I'd use them when the conditions weren't too bad. If the conditions were a little bit choppier, I'd tend to go for that fibre bristle underneath, which is a Surge UK. You're sort of looking at 4B8 up to sort of 4 by 14 size, sort of a 0.4 size. Um, so they're a really nice float for drain and shallower drain and canal fishing. Then, like we said earlier about the long pencil floats, if I'm bread fishing and the conditions are right, I tend to use a pencil float again. They're just more sensitive. You're fishing with smaller sort of bulk down rigs, shorter hook lengths, one dropper or no droppers with the bread, being quite positive. So you can dro drop it in right over your bread in your target zone and catch faster. So them pencil floats are good for that. Very good for just lowering it in right over your zone. Um, if, for example, um, I was fishing bigger baits like casters or a little bit of worm or just big, big maggot, sort of light, medium, heavy fishing, if you know what I mean, catch a bit of everything, I tend to go for that sort of body shape, which, again, is your round one, wire stem, but a cane bristle. Um, I love cane bristles. They fish the same every time. And that's the two between the delta. Um, like I say, if you were fishing a big bit of bread, like Town Welland, for example, sometimes this year when it was flowing hard, you had to fish a bigger bit of bread on the bottom. With that bristle there, you could hold back and you could sort of present it a little bit better. That body, so that body shape's a bit rounder. It is, yeah. So it's very much like the river floats we had earlier on in yep. the video, yep. but a smaller version for smaller venues. I've got it, yeah. Um, then... The last sort of two patterns are whip floats. So the top one is the Sensors T2, which loads of people use them. They're brilliant for fishing, for example, to 20 foot this year when you were fishing for up to a thousand fish, um, fishing a foot deep, loose feeding literally nothing. Um, it's it's fishes real quick and they sort of hook themselves against the, the body shape. The one underneath there is an Alberella. That's a bit more slimmer profile. That's more for bleak, where the bites are a bit more tentative. Um, but the T2s, you can use for a bit of everything, really. You can use them on canals for a cross. They're a bit of a generic flow. A lot of people use them for different things. Hemp as well. So um, that really, Andy, is the uh, natural sort of floats that I use. Um, I don't know if there's anything else there we need to cover. No, I think that's perfect, Alex. And um, All those floats are available in the shop. So if people want to get in touch with you via eBay or phone or yeah, so or if, they've, if they've got any questions, you know, they might think, oh, um, I use so-and-so float or what do you recommend for this venue? Just give us a ring 07 824 878 492.